Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are studying the lacrimal pump and tear pump mechanism. Along with that, we shall be studying about two important tests and these are the fluorescent dye disappearance test and the Jones dye test 1 and 2. Before we start, it is very important for us to recollect the anatomy of the orbicularis muscle which was told in detail in the video on anatomy of eyelid. So we know that our orbicularis basically has a preceptal portion and a pretarsal portion which is present in front of the orbital septum and the tarsal plate respectively. Now what happens is that in the pre-blink stage or when our eyes are open, the orbicularis muscle is actually in a relaxed state. And as the orbicularis muscle is relaxed, the puncta basically will lie in the tear lake and in very close approximation to the tears. And therefore, the tears are going to actually enter this puncta and the canaliculi very easily when the eyes are open. Now, during the blink or when we close our eyes, basically with eyelid closure, the orbicularis oculi muscle will actually contract. And now, the pretarsal orbicularis, which is present in close proximation to the puncta and the canaliculi, will squeeze and close these puncta and the canaliculi. At the same time, the preceptal orbicularis, which inserts near the lacrimal crest around the lacrimal sac, will actually contract and pull the walls of the lacrimal sac laterally. As that happens, the lacrimal sac will open and because of the opening of the lacrimal sac and along with that, the closing of the puncta, there will be a creation of a negative pressure inside the lacrimal sac and because of that negative pressure, all the tears which were present in the puncta and the canaliculi will be actually drawn into the sac. Now again after the blink, that is the post blink stage when the eyes will open again, what happens is that with eye opening the orbicularis will get relaxed again and therefore the puncta will open. However, the lacrimal sac will now collapse because the preceptor uh, orbicularis has actually uh, started to relax and therefore the lacrimal sac will collapse or get relaxed and because of that the tears will now flow down the nasolacrimal duct. So simultaneously the puncta will open and the canaliculi will again fill up with the tear fluid. So basically in the pre-blink stage what happens when the eyes were open the tears were actually filling up in the canaliculi and therefore in the blink stage when the orbicularis basically contracts the preceptal orbicularis pulls the lacrimal sac uh, laterally therefore the lacrimal sac will open and therefore the tears will come inside the lacrimal sac. Again the lacrimal sac will collapse in the post blink stage when the eyes are open and the orbicularis is relaxed leading to the flow of the tears downwards into the nose to the nasolacrimal duct. Now this entire cycle what we studied just now is called the tear pump or the lacrimal pump mechanism. So I hope you understood what is it. Next let us talk about the fluorescent dye disappearance test. So what is this FDDT or the fluorescent dye disappearance test? The FDT basically uh, is a test in which 2% fluorescent dye is actually put into the conjunctival sac of both the eyes and afterwards you wait for 5 minutes and then you observe both the eyes and compare the staining in both the eyes. Now in normal eyes what happens is that almost the entire fluorescent gets washed off in 5 minutes and for example suppose you have this patient in which you carry out the FDT DT test and after 5 minutes of staining you observe that there is actually impaired dye clearance in the left eye or you can also say that there is asymmetrical clearance of the dye from the left eye. When this happens, it is actually an indication that there is some sort of blockage in the lacrimal apparatus of the left eye. So the information that you get in this FDD test is very similar to that of syringing. However, this test is less invasive compared to syringing and this test can actually be used in uncooperative patient and in case of pediatric population. So whenever you have this prolonged retention of dye in the conjunctival sac beyond 5 minutes, it's basically indicating that there is inadequate drainage. That means these, uh, this dye is not actually entering very well 
into the puncta, into the canaliculus, into the sac and not draining very well into the nose and therefore this indicates that there is inadequate drainage and this inadequate drainage might be either because of lack of uh, tone in the lacrimal sac it might be because of the failure of the lacrimal pump or it might also be because of some obstruction. So you don't really get uh, the exact reason for an abnormal FDT test, but it just tells you that there is some problem in, uh, along the lacrimal apparatus. So do you remember in our previous video, we talked about a situation in which suppose you carry out syringing and the patient has a patent pathway. That means the patient responds that yes, he can taste the salty taste in his throat and you carry out probing and probing is also normal. However, the patient is still complaining of epiphora or watering. Now, in such a condition, you have to consider three important uh, situations and these uh, these are the hyperlacrimation, the lacrimal pump failure and the partial obstruction in the lacrimal passage. So let us discuss all of these one by one. So the first one is the hyperlacrimation. Now in hyperlacrimation, basically what happens is that you have excessive tearing, right? Here, however, the orbicularis is normal and therefore your lacrimal pump is normal. The entire purpose of the lacrimal pump is actually to draw the, the tears into the lacrimal sac. Now, since the lacrimal pump is normal, the tears will therefore reach the lacrimal sac normally. Moreover, the lacrimal pathway is also patent. That means there is no blockage and therefore the syringing is also going to be positive in such a case. And also the probing will be normal. The next condition is that of the lacrimal pump failure. Now here in the lacrimal pump failure, the epiphora is basically due to the failure of the lacrimal pump mechanism. So here the tears will actually not reach the lacrimal sac normally and however the pathway of the drainage of the tears is normal and therefore when you carry out syringing the patient will respond in affirmative. So that means the syringing will be normal or positive and even the probing will be normal. So this is the pump failure in which again syringing and probing is going to be normal and epiphora is because of the lacrimal pump mechanism failure. Now what, what if there is actually a partial obstruction in the lacrimal passage, right? So here epiphora is because of the failure of complete drainage. So although some fluid will reach the throat, but most of it is not reaching and that is causing excessive tearing. So here again, the lacrimal pump is normal. So the tears are going to definitely reach the sac normally. However, the pathway is partially patent. So when you carry out syringing, the syringing uh, could be actually completely normal or partially normal based on the amount of force with which you are actually putting the fluid into the lacrimal apparatus. So sometimes if you actually push in the fluid with a lot of pressure, the syringing might become totally normal because you might actually, you know, break through a membranous obstruction. So now let us talk about this Jones diet test keeping in mind all these three conditions of hyperlacrimation, lacrimal pump failure and the partial obstruction in the lacrimal passage. So basically the Jones diet test is of two types, Jones diet test 1 which is also called the primary Jones test and the Jones test 1 is then you know followed by the Jones test 2 which is also called the secondary Jones test. So first we'll talk about the Jones test one, which is also referred to as the primary Jones test. So in Jones test one, what do we do? We actually instill one drop of fluorescein into the conjunctival sac of both the eyes. And at the same time, we are going to put a cotton bud, which is soaked in the anesthetic solution in the inferior meatus of the nose. We wait for five minutes and then we actually detect the fluorescein on the bud. Okay, so if you detect the fluorescein to be present on this bud placed in the nose. It basically means that the lacrimal system is patent. That means the dye has actually flown across this pathway and has reached this cotton bud. So for the purpose of a simple uh, simplification, let me tell you that in Jones dye test, whenever dye is present on the cotton bud, it is called a positive test. And when the dye is absent on the cotton bud placed inside the nose, the test is called negative. So in this Jones test one, after five minutes, if you detect the fluorescein on the bud, it is called a positive primary Jones test. Now let us interpret what is meant by this positive primary Jones test. 
okay so a positive test over here it basically tells us that the dye which was instilled into the conjunctival sac was actually able to reach the lacrimal sac area that means the lacrimal pump might be normal second the dye actually was able to reach the uh, the cotton bud placed in the nose through the lacrimal sac it means that the lacrimal system might also be patent so in such a condition the cause of epiphora is the hyper secretion of the tears or hyper lacrimation now what if you get a negative primary jones test that means you you instill the drops that means the fluorescent drops into the eye and you place a cotton bud and you discover that there is no fluorescent on the bud and instead you are seeing this pool of fluorescent even overflowing onto the cheeks so here in this case this is called a negative primary jones test it might indicate either of the two problems that means either there is a pump problem that means the lacrimal pump has failed to suck in all that dye into the sac or there's a problem along the passage of the lacrimal apparatus that means there is some sort of obstruction now with just the primary jones test or the jones test one you cannot differentiate uh, these two conditions and therefore we have to go ahead and do the second test which is the secondary jones test now in the secondary zone test it is basically done when the jones one is negative and what we are doing in the secondary test is that we are going to perform basically syringe so remember secondary has an s in it and in the secondary test you actually perform syringe so what exactly are we doing here we are trying to push the dye which is present already in the sac towards the cotton bud by doing a syringe so by doing a syringe if you actually see the fluorescent on the bud it basically shows that the dye was initially present in the lacrimal sac and that dye in the lacrimal sac actually indicates that there was already a normal lacrimal pump however the dye could not make its way to the cotton bud because of a partial obstruction of the nasal lacrimal duct which was released later by our pressure of syringe and therefore a positive secondary jones test which becomes positive in presence of syringe indicates that there is a partial obstruction of the nasal lacrimal duct so i hope that is clear now what about a negative secondary jones test now if there is no dye which is found uh, no dye is found on the cotton bud even after doing syringe now what does it indicate it indicates that although we relieved that obstruction also but there is no dye itself present inside the lacrimal sac for it to reach the cotton bud that means or uh, maybe there is a lacrimal pump failure because of which the fluorescent had not entered the sac or we have some sort of stenosis of the puncta and the proximal canalicular system because of which this this dye has not found its way to the sac itself and therefore even when we do syringe it's of no use and we're not going to find the dye onto the cotton bud so to summarize in jones test 1 if jones test 1 is positive it indicates that the system is patent and the problem over here is the hyper lacrimation if jones test 1 is negative but jones test 2 is positive it indicates that there is a partial block in the nasal lacrimal duct system if both the jones 1 and jones 2 are negative it is suggestive that no dye is actually entering the lacrimal system that means there is a functional block which is also called a lacrimal pump failure or there is a proximal partial obstruction in the lacrimal system so that brings us to the end of the video and i will end by asking a question that is which of the following is correct about jones test 1 So I hope you know the answer by now and if you know the right answer comment in the comment section and that's all for today I hope you liked it thank you and have a nice day